Hello everybody. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about temperature in fermentation or during fermentation. And even though I'm standing over a uh, Syrah bin that's getting pumped over, I think that t everybody should know that temperature in fermentation really relates to basically every wine that you're making. Whether it is a Syrah or a Pinot or a Cab or the white wines like Chardonnay or uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So, how important is temperature and uh, how do we monitor it? And how do we actually keep it from either going too high or too low? Now, let's start with white wines, get those out of the way. With white wines, whether you're making a very bright, fruity, um, kind of crisp style of wine versus something that has a little bit more weight or a little bit more density to it, temperature does play a key role. And uh, that's why the uh, grassy, uh, kind of spritzy, bright uh, Sauvignon Blancs tend to be fermented at that cool temperature or actually even cold, anywhere between I want to say 12 and 15 degrees Celsius, you're looking at uh, getting that style evolved from there because the cooler the fermentation, the more fruit forward the wine's going to be. Or if you're doing a barrel fermentation Chardonnay, you're looking more for that 18 to 20 degrees Celsius temperature because that slightly warmer temperature tends to enhance a little bit more of the weight of the wine and doesn't focus so much on the fruit intensity that the wine offers. That's white wine. Now let's go to red wine, and to some extent there is some similarities when it comes to temperature range for making a particular red wine. If you're making a very bright kind of, uh, kind of you know, light colored, you know, very fruit driven Pinot, you don't need to get that temperature up to about 32, 33 degrees Celsius. You can actually cap it at about 27, 28 because uh, at that point you're really accentuating the fruit component and kind of limiting the real deep color extraction that happens when you do ferment quite, uh, quite hot. Now if you go for the more hearty, robust reds like Syrah and Cabs, yeah, you kind of want to push the envelope when it comes to temperature. You do want to get up there around 33, 34 degrees without uh, necessarily going too overboard because you do run the risk of harming the yeast. They do have a tolerance level when it comes to high temperatures, but uh, you will get some real deep, dark color extraction when you get that temperature up early in fermentation. There is different uh, times during fermentation where you, you, you need to accent, uh, sorry, focus on getting that temperature up. And uh, early on in fermentation is where you get all of that color extraction happening. And that's where you want to focus on your temp. Now in my hand, I have a thermometer that we actually use to go around bins and actually monitor the temperature. And the reason I'm pumping over this bin of Syrah is because it actually got the temperature was getting above 33 degrees. And when you get too warm where it can actually harm the yeast, you do need to circulate the wine so that you can aerate it and actually cool the temp down. And uh, sticking the, the thermometer, I can find an area to go in there, I'm actually seeing that we've, we've been able to take it down from 33 degrees to 29 degrees. So it's probably getting a good uh, um, aeration, it's getting uh, that temperature lowered so we're able to uh, actually maintain the health of that fermentation. So uh, a lot of people actually uh, wonder how do you maintain temperature control when it comes to fermenting your wines in bins. We don't have those uh, shiny stainless steel tanks here like the traditional wineries where they have temperature control through glycol. Here everything is done in these uh, one ton tea bins and the way to control that uh, temperature is uh, by one doing this pump over like we're doing here. Two, we do have our cold room which really serves a good purpose in terms of fermenting our, our cool uh, wines, our white wines. Into, um, into that cold room so that it maintains that 15 degrees Celsius uh, temperature range. And then of course uh, doing traditional punch downs if you're not doing a subcap. If you got a uh, Cabernet that you don't want to, uh, to do uh, you know, a subcap for color extraction or for cap management but you're continuing to just do the standard punch down, that punch down itself actually helps uh, cool that temperature down by actually mixing up the, the cap and, uh, and the juice and actually bringing up the juice uh, you know, during the course of actually doing a punch down. So in terms of uh, uh, monitoring, again, with the submerged cap, you can uh, do the pump overs. You can actually even take the sub cap out, do a punch down, and then um, put the cap back in. If you got uh, a temperature that's really getting hot, another option is to actually move it into the cool room and uh, let the cap cool down and then punch the, the bin down while it's in the cool room so that you can actually get the temperature lowered by a good three to four degrees Celsius. And again, if you're doing a, um, a white wine, whether it's a uh, stainless steel uh, fermented uh, Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay, most of the time it's fermented in that cool room. 
and uh, a Chardonnay that is barrel fermented a lot of times can actually be in our cellar where it can get up to about 20, 22 degrees Celsius. The, the yeast gets real happy when it's got all of the nutrients available to it so that it can uh, consume all of this sugar and uh, produce alcohol. But what a lot of people may not realize is that uh, the alcoholic fermentation itself is an exothermic reaction. And hopefully I'm not using too big of a term for a lot of you folks out there. But exothermic meaning that it's a reaction that actually releases heat. And uh, the stronger the yeast is, the more nutrient it has to feed on, the more active the fermentation is going to be, which in turn then raises that temperature. So it is very important to maintain consistency of temperature and actually having a healthy level of temperature where it's not harming the yeast. So by continually monitoring the temperatures on a daily basis, we're able to maintain the health of the, of the yeast and be able to have a steady rate of fermentation. And at the same token, if the temperature is too cold, you're going to have problems with the yeast actually doing their job too. So there's, there's definitely a window where the yeast likes to function and give you the kind of uh, wine that you want to make. And that's where the you know, in-house winemakers and the cellar crew here that are working at Crushpad uh, are making sure that every one of these bins has the right proper temperature. So now to sum it all up, what kind of wine are we making and how is temperature going to be uh, helping achieve that style of wine? If you're making a wine that you want to express a lot of bright fruit, that you want to show off a lot of uh, nice red colors that are not completely uh, dark and dense and brooding, then you can look at maximizing your temperature at about you know, 25 degrees or so Celsius. Uh, the deeper, the darker, the denser your wine's going to be. If you want to do something that's going to be really opaque in color, that's going to have a lot of uh, kind of um, inkiness to it when the wine is young, whether it's a Cab or a Syrah, or even a Zinfandel, then getting the temperatures up, especially early on in fermentation, that's where you get a lot of that uh, extraction happening. So it's imperative to really look at getting that temperature up there if you want that style of wine. As far as whites are concerned, if you want to make a real crisp, bright Sauvignon Blanc with a lot of uh, vibrancy to it, a lot of freshness, a lot of crisp acidity, you can actually then look at fermenting it quite cold, again, in that uh, 12 to 15 degree C range. And if you want something a little bit more weighty, have a little creaminess and have some malolactic activity happen in that wine, you can actually look at getting the temperature up to about 18 to 20 degrees C. So I hope that this brief little talk uh, helped you guys out with uh, how important tem temperature is during fermentation. And I look forward to catching up with you with another edition of Winemakers Matters.